Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, as we're beginning to wrap up the month of March, we're looking on this 29th day, Wednesday. Um, Dow is up 234, 32,628. This is not a great pattern right here. I usually love a cluster pattern, but the cluster pattern, as you can see right here, when it starts to stall too long after peak B or C, you use up time rather than uh, use up time and some price, but more time with that energy to the upside, especially when the technicals are strong, and yet the price is good but not great. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, uh, we need to get to a leg C above 32,761.89. One penny above that starts your leg C, then you've got the 200, the 32,900. And three level resistance at that 200 period moving average. But wait a minute, look what's going on here. The S&P is already slightly above the 200 period moving average. Also trying to make make uh, the the leg D. Now remember we discussed this, the Chapman wave falling axe formation with the Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. I said you got to be decisively above this trend line to really be breaking out, and then you can possibly make a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, but you have to look at the left side highs, first of all, where the left side high that we're looking at with the S&P up 41 at 4,012 is 4,039 uh, on the 22nd. Well, that's quite a way to go still. And then you've got the left side high of the <clears throat> 6th of March, which is at 4,078. So we've got a lot of work to do, but I, I must say, over this period, I just do have to do this for a moment, and let me just get rid of this right here, just move it aside. I I still think that the, the concept that I have of, there we go, that we possibly have made an internal low, and that's the law, I don't like to put numbers in this, right, this particular pattern, this is with the Chapman Wave Dark News Cloud Cover Formation. Talk about earthquake and aftershock. Well, the low of the 15th of March at 31,429 <clears throat> had a strong leg to the upside to peak B and then pulled back. Then made a higher low, and I call that the residual low, even though this is all in kind of miniature. This is a micro rather than the macro of this huge pattern. We're looking at internal lows and residual lows. And that says there should be a rally that takes you towards the 33,000 level. And then we'll have to decide what's going on. This midpoint of the rectangle, long rectangle channel, right there at 33,000, it's called it 550. Um, that's to get there it requires just a whole other thing, and I don't know if we're quite ready for that. But I am very positive in the short term on a number of areas that have been improving, and we're going to talk about them in a moment. Let me get back to this. I want to show you the QQQ. Running nicely up uh, 4.28 at 311.37. It needs to get to 315.26. Yeah, 315.25 was a high. 315.26 starts your leg C. That's going to be important. Look at the way the weekly chart has been improving. So I, I'm not in the camp that says um, we still have to see the worst in this particular phase right now. I think we've seen the worst. There could be another. Remember, I've been talking about this as as a basing formation where we're off the October low, and each time we rally sharply, it allows you some room to come down for all these 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 really uh, ugly economic reports that come out. So I'm talking about a rotational correction at the bottom that shouldn't take out the October low. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. So let me just do this one more time. Uh, the monthly chart, we've got two days to go, or two and a half days, oh, three days. Today's a full day, so we've only not even done an hour yet. So this is a really nice strong leg A. The histogram and the MACD, uh, it's starting to improve, but it's really still very weak. 
Stochastic's weak at uh, 24% on balance volumes rallying. <clears throat> the nine period moving average is still well under. So that monthly chart has a long way to go. And the only way it can do is if this cup formation in the daily chart really breaks sharply to the upside and doesn't make a double top in the 13, 313, 314 area, but instead pushes towards 319, 320 over the next couple of days. So with that said, I want to go to the IWM. Uh, I said in the first segment, I'll get to a couple of stocks that were asked about in the or issues that were symbols that we looked at, we want to look at in the den. So the IWM is much, much weaker. But if you're looking at gold, first of all, look at gold. It's holding quite nicely up 11 in 1984. But the GDX is falling. Look, gold made the Chapman Week peak E about three weeks ago. The GDX is at leg D, pulling back a little at minus 16 at 32.16. Really nice action, although I don't like peak Ds to be under the previous major high. And that just says to me that the gold miners have played catch up. It's really important that they played catch up. But if you look at the silver, silver has played catch up, has already got to that peak D. It's sort of stalling here. And that's the clue that says to me that gold could have some, some a little further pullback over the next couple of days. But it seems to be in play because those financials, XLF, they are still in play as being very, very, very weak. So that means gold is the go-to place. I just want to do this real quickly. DXY, which is the dollar up uh, 28 ticks at 102.70. Doesn't look too great, but it is trying to rally. And now I want you to do FXI, which is, I'll, I'll just include it now because it is important. This is leg C to the upside in the FXI, which is the ISIS China large cap ETF. Yes, whoever, uh, GT, they talked about puts the other day. I said, no, no, no. I think it's going to be going higher with the market. And uh, now I see you got calls on the FXI. Very good. Um, and that is, that target is 29.65, the children period moving average. It's at 29.41 right now, up a penny. And the other question was Ulta. I'll look at Ulta in a little bit more detail in a moment, but it is down 354. 528.25, and I say this Ultra Beauty, which, you know, beauty products, it's the last in any recessionary period to take a dive. I mean, that's the history of these uh, uh, vanity stocks. Um, and Ultra Beauty, maybe it's not vanity, maybe it's health. <laughs> health, health and beauty. Um, and so far it is, um, so, so far it is, I'll talk about it in a moment. I'd like to go into it in a little bit more detail. I did, I did want to look at the TLT to say, hey, if bonds are pulling back and the yields are going higher, all within this rectangle formation in the weekly chart, that's all I can say is I don't think bonds are the issue right now. They are stuck in a range. They will become an issue if, they break the, uh, if the TLT breaks 110 on the upside, closes over 110 on the weekly chart, or closes under 99 on the downside. Let's just make it as simple as possible. I think other question I had was, yes, um, the other thing was crude oil. Now, someone said the other day, hey, I like crude oil. It's going to be moving higher. And I said, well, it, the formula that I was looking at with this Chapman Wave propeller shaft with the move from the upside back in around about October to the 90, 92, 93 level, and then pulling back sharp into the 70s and bouncing to 82 and then coming down makes this a midpoint and then it could go to the 62, maybe even 60 area where it went to 64, I believe. 64, the continuous contract, yeah, 64, 36. And now it's rallied very nicely. So now it's about to come into very strong resistance between 74 and 75. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 208. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, let me just do this. Uh, I've been talking about this for some time about Ulta Beauty, that if Ulta Beauty at any point really takes a dive and starts to trade in the 480s, that'll be the first time that we've seen um, we've seen that in leading the market, instead of leading the market to the upside on rallies, it's starting to say, wait a minute, this is the most sensitive area. <clears throat> and therefore, you've got to consider that within the context of, um, within the context of being an independent market uh, player, uh, this is going to be very interesting because I just need to check something here. Oh, I don't know if I can do it quick enough. Oh, no, I'll do it. I'll do it this way here. So within the, the context of uh, the market itself, what are we looking at? We're looking at one of the biggest players of all at 527 right now, down four, having led the market all the way from the March March 2020 low of, I forgot if I typed that in there. It was 147, I think. Oops, 124. Oh, my, 124.05 March. Let me just put that in. 124.07.3.2020. Uh, that is incredible. 127 to 527 right now. 124, sorry, to 520. Oh, that is really quite something. So, you can look at the nine period moving average. If you took it when uh, on January of 2021, <clears throat> when it crossed positive uh, in the, let's go to the high of that bar, let's go to 310, you'd be, uh, you'd be sitting pretty because it's still the nine is way above the 14. So in looking at this as a short, and uh, we have someone in the den who's, who's got puts on this, and from the almost the high yesterday, I would say this is the first opportunity that you've got in terms of. Um, now, how can I put this? Because we've already seen a move from 537 down to 500. What was the exact low there? Hmm. 501.04. Oh, 
mid-March 501.04. Yes, I would say this extension is a little bit too much. I, I think on a very short-term basis, you're correct. But at the same time, you see, look at the way the MACD has crossed positive. It hasn't deflected lower. If it was deflecting lower, I'd say, oh, that's fantastic. And look at the stochastic. It hasn't given a, a single thing up. It's at 64%. On balance, the volume is the only thing that's a little bit overbought. The nine has crossed over over a couple of days ago. It crossed positive. Oh, I'd say it's holding really well after that sharp. For it, the 37 is not even an 8% pullback. 8% pullback for Ulta Booty, um, rare. It doesn't <laughs> it doesn't happen too often. Um, yes, I'd be careful. I'd say you're, you're probably in the right position right now because I think it was overextended. From Monday, Tuesday, from Monday's big move up in anticipation. And then we got the move overnight. We got the big move. And now it's pulling back from the intraday high. So for the printed intraday high, it's 533.09. I think it was higher than that earlier on. But now it's at 527. Not a big deal. So, yes, you are in the put position. I think you're already in the money. So what I'm going to say to you is um, if it bounces – to the 533 level, 532.50 level in the next day and a half, I'd be a little careful. You want speed to the downside right now. This has to be an aberration of too much optimism, and now the reality is coming back. Or it's just saying, you know what? Not ready for a, a sell off just yet. And I'll tell you, market wise, um, that move that on the 23rd of March, when it went from 537 to 82 with an open of around number 532. That 532 is absolutely imperative because if it closes above, well, I should have mentioned that before. I think I might have, because that's my rule with round numbers. If it does go into the direction that you're looking at, in this case, down, but it then closes above that round number, be careful because you've lost the impetus because that round number was someone being very selective and saying, at 520, at 532, I'm doing something. And that was really important. That means it's not as important anymore. That's all I'm saying. So here we are. Uh, Alta. The next question was, um, yeah, three times your money in three years. That's amazing. Anyway, I'm talking about it. but And I've spoken about it often enough. Never did it. Talk about something I've spoken about often enough. Look at this. This is another reason why I... I cannot get over bearish yet because, yes, Sintas Corporation, overalls, uniforms, rentals, um, about to, it's about to attempt a try to go above 470.23 in the monthly chart for a le an all-time high in leg D. The high of the 16th, week of the 16th of December at 470.23 produced a cup formation and now it's going back. Now, let me talk about this in terms of the technicals that I'm looking at in, uh, we were looking at uh, Alta. So you see the difference here. You see this cup formation has used all these bars and then it's trying to rally to a new high. But here the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. It could deflect lower. The stochastic's way down at 30%. It has crossed higher. On balance volume is really strong, but it's actually a little overbought. So this is now, this is the kind of pattern that would have said to me, okay, now on Ulta, there's a chance that it could pull back because this is a weekly chart and it's just saying that Syntas, although it's fabulous action, or almost an all-time high in this particular market, it's telling me, now this goes to the jobs. And it says that within the overalls, rentals, uniforms, uh, et cetera, <clears throat> the demand is absolutely has been there up until to, to, to the last report. So that it could have, things that could have changed. But you've got your rectangle formation spiked above the rectangle formation in one session. It just took out all the resistance levels. It did not go below. In other words, normally in this rectangle formation, I think we've got one right here that we'll look at in a moment in the, uh, the E-mini. Look what happened. It went above it. That's usually a very good sign, but now it's a little bit overboard. It went to 467.85, 470.23, less than three points from an all-time high. Now it's pulling back a little bit. So let me just get this into perspective. 
so within the context of, uh, I need to just look at this. Yeah, within the context of the RH, look at RHI. So this is the real thing. This is jobs. This is Robert Half International Recruitment Temporary Jobs. Have you been, I'll ask out in the, in the general audience all around the country, all around the world. Have you been out and seen stores all over the show with signs that say, um, excellent benefits, looking for workers, etc.? Yes. So the Fed, when, when, when I was talking to this huge bond uh, dealer um, company um, head the other day, um, and he shook his head and said, ah, oh, rates are going to have to go higher. If, if they, they, they are, there's so much in debt, what is the Fed going to do? They, they call it to rock in the hard place. I think in the macro aspect, I don't think that's wrong. I think that's good thinking. But in the micro, the, the as long as the economy is seeing the benefit of people, of employers wanting employees, that's a good sign. And yet, I'll talk about it when we get back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back. I, I, what, what was I saying? I was going to follow up as we got uh, Was it this? Uh, no, was this? Yeah, yeah, we are. So we're looking at the uh, uh, the one minute has made this beautiful arch formation. It went down to four thousand and thirty seven, right on the uh, ten minute. That's in the one minute chart. Look, this is nice arch formation, and the black fourteen period exponential moving average, which is still under the green nine, which means that it's still bullish, held very nicely. This did make a peak C. Now. In an opening uh, rally, 
sometimes that's a, that's one of the few times where you can really get a failure pattern at a peak A or a B, even a C, and break down without going to a D. But in this particular instance, this is still active. MACD hasn't turned negative. Yes, stochastic is weak. On bounds of volume is very low. But we'll see what happens over the next, uh, um, I'd say, oh, until the close of my show at 11 o'clock. So we're watching this very closely. And I told subscribers we want to get into certain positions, which we, uh, now in, in the uh, Tiger YouTube, uh, someone said, um, <clears throat> yes, they are. Yeah, Earl says, buy the dips. Hi, Basil, buy the dips. I think in this particular instance, selectively, yes, you can't just buy every dip of everything, but there are some issues that you can buy. So the question came up in, the, in at MPWR. Uh, so this is, who's that? That is Tony. Tony, so I'm looking at MPWR, Monolithic Power Systems, Inc., High Performance Semi-Based Solutions. I remember this was in I Investors Business Daily some time ago. I did my homework and I did this with an analysis and it did get in the cup formation to the left side, right side within a week. It got to just within points of the high that was made on the week of August 12th, uh, 2022 at 541.39, plummets down to 300, then has a spectacular rally that goes peak A, peak B. It went to C twice. Uh, one was at, five, at 529.95. And the next week went 530.65. So it just missed making that. MACD was still good. Stochastic was still very good. And yet it took a stalling formation right here, like a cup. And now it's trying to form some kind of a handle. And not one of my favorite patterns, unless you get the exact area of the low before it rallies. Because if you get it as it breaks out, what happens is it goes above and then it comes back in. That's my one of my least favorite patterns. It's almost like a... Like a, um, it's almost like a head and shoulders pattern. It's a fabulous pattern, but you better recognize it early because otherwise you've lost the whole impetus. Because if it breaks the neckline, at that point it can. It doesn't mean to say that it's going to collapse, but it does mean to say the work has been done on the pattern itself. So let me just do this here to show you the daily chart has got this declining channel, and this kind of channel is not quite the ones that I look at that are much steeper and narrower going all the way down and look like a little mini tube that goes down. Then all of a sudden you get a break to the upside and it takes out at least one of the peaks on the left side. And then you have to see, does it do the other peaks? In this particular instance, I think there's a little more work to be done. Monolithic Power M, P, W, R, trading at 484.28, up 9.24. The question was, uh, MPWR purchase. Oh, I didn't see the purchase yesterday at 464. Oh, so is that eight or four? Wow, 464. Uh, I have a shot at 516 short term. So um, what I'm looking at here, you, oh, you bought it yesterday, of course. So if you bought it yesterday, it's trading very nice at 484. So you can see the nine went under the 14 yesterday on that slide to the downside. I don't know if you were using a trend line, but look at this beautiful trend line support. So now it's got this pattern. I like to put this in. It's a development I, I did decades ago, and I thought, wow, what an interest. I've never seen it ever done. Not even in, I, I mean, I've been getting Stocks and Commodities magazine for forever. And I've never even seen it discussed that this becomes an inside track propellant zone and that's the resistance zone. Within a channel, you've got a mini channel. You don't even have to have the channel. You And what it, what's happening right now is that you got a great entry point. You know what? The best thing is, I don't know what your stop is, but you're up 20 points. I'm going to suggest to you that you do not want to see the low taken out. If the low of yesterday, actually, to tell you the truth, the body that is the, um, it opened at 482.10 and it closed at 475.04. So I would say if it closes under, if it, if it dips under 475 today, I would just take a little bit off. You can always add it back. But I just in terms of money management, if by Friday, and skip Thursday, if by Friday's close, 
I'd even go into Monday. If it hasn't taken our 475 and it actually goes today's high as 487, if it goes to 492, that S will probably flip back to an L. And that's exactly what you want to see. But it also says, be careful, because it's also telling you that it's in the chop, chop, chop uh, zone. And that choppy zone says uh, it could be stuck in a range. But I like, I like your thinking, Tony. Um, and I love the weekly chart with all the technicals still strong. It looks like that this is trough A, trough B. This is leg C to the downside. If by end of the week, you can see that 490, up in the 490s area, 495 or, or more, then I think you're absolutely correct. You could be making a slow arch. I know you said short term, but on a weekly basis, it could start to move up. And at any point on a daily ch pattern, if it closes any day above 602, who did I say? Yeah, 602. No, <laughs> you'd love 602. 502, um, there's a real good chance it's going to go very quickly to the high of uh, 517. Uh, that's pushing it a bit, uh, but at least towards the 517s. So just this is the way I'm looking at it right now. The, the technicals and the daily are weak. And therefore, I, I would not be surprised if it actually slips a little bit. But I'm just saying to you, good eye, number one, good thinking. And I don't know where you're going to put your stops. But that's the way I'd be playing it. ISRG, ISRG, another one I've followed for decades. But never, I don't think we've ever owned it, even though it's an amazing company, Intuitive Surgical, uh, Da Vinci Robotics. I had a friend who started a business, I think here in Cambridge, Mass. I'm in, I'm in Newton, Mass. Um, and they produced a, a, um, a hand, hand implication of tools that far, they, they thought far surpassed intuitive surgical in terms of accuracy, although they're electronic. I don't know. Electronic is pretty accurate. But anyway, that's what they said. And not, I can't say cheaper. I can say it was like going down to your uh, five, uh, five and below or, or your dollar store as a com compared to going to Bloomingdale's. Because Intuitive Surgical, you took millions of dollars when they want to buy um, the, the, the equipment. And these guys were really in the th thousands or t tens of thousands. Um, they failed. They couldn't make it. It, it was. The, the surgeons that they had try it. Everybody loved it. They could. They just couldn't get hospitals who had put so much effort and money into the intuitive surg surgical to even think of changing, uh, implementing this new pro process. So that's the way it is. I'll be back in a moment. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, the question was... I'm looking for the peak D in the, in the monthly. When you see this very sharp move in peak A, peak B, peak C, you see the steepness of this decline, and you see the way the nine went under the 14 period moving average. You see the way Ma the MACD did go negative, but it's still flat. Flat's good, but flat also takes in the last, uh, the last uh, up arrow or down arrow. So this is still an up arrow, but it is flattening out. And the stochastic is way down 21%. It's the monthly chart that has me worried. Now, look at this. Um, here's a, you see this pattern, peak A, peak B, peak C? Look what happened here. This is the 10-minute chart. Peak A, peak B, peak C. Look at the steepness. No, the 9 period in the 10-minute E-mini, the the, it hasn't crossed negative yet, but it is real close to turning negative. Not only that, Look at this pullback, and if I do a fib number on it, uh, this, is where, where I, this is where I find it's kind of important to add other technical tools. And I go from there to there. And let's just move that up a little bit. You can see that the pullback has actually gone under right there, under the 238. Oops, 23, 23. Yeah, right there. It's right, holding just above it right now, but it went under it. That's kind of steep. And if you're looking at this particular pattern right here, um, it's about a 50% decline. So in that regard, I'd say, yeah, that's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, I'm going to do that right here. Look, here we go, from there to there. <clears throat> As I said, 50% exact. So it's a little bit better. <clears throat> I just do one thing at a time. I would look at the Dow, I'm sorry, I'd look at the FXI daily, and if it starts to trade in the first week and a half of April, I am talking about trade. I don't want to just to spike up and fail, but if it starts to trade at 31, 31, 35 to 31, 47 in that area, finally I can say to you, yes, maybe now we can look at that D. But it's a process, and the process has to start with the daily, which is your shorter term. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Another question came in. So I have to congratulate. We had a dinner who said he was waiting, 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 waiting. And then he decided, yep, that was the right time to buy the SOXS. I believe that's what he said. So the SOXS is the uh, three times short the SMHs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it was that he bought it, but I think it was the, right here at this 10, 10 o'clock. Uh, sorry, about 10, 15 area time frame. So he got it in maybe in the 17, 18, 18 area, and here it is at 1828. Now look at the way it's walking the nine period exponential moving average. However, be aware that it is within a rectangle, a long rectangle. A rectangle can a pattern can last a lot longer than your patience. So see how it trades here. This is going to be very important. Is it able to get to 1847? 
and it needs to do that quite quickly. If it does that, that's really important and makes, then I can say, at any stage, if there is a, right there, halfway. If there is a slide under 18 on the SOXS, if there is a slide under 1810, it's at 18.31 right now, down a dollar uh, from the open, that is from yesterday's close, I should say. If it does that, be careful because it can go all the way back to the 1780 level. So this is kind of an important moment. A couple of questions have come in. Where did, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, I can't see. The call on what? Oh, on NEO. Oh, I need to go to my daily chart. All right, here we go, daily chart. NIO. Um, a big A, it's in leg C and it's got an L, but the day is young, so the nine is just crossing the 14. The MACD is good, stochastics running at 71%. I prefer 80%. That's okay. Well, this is the thing. The 50-period exponential moving average. Now, I use this. I have it just sitting there. It's at 980. Most fund managers, I don't know if things have changed, but at least about eight years ago, I'd say, to my knowledge, almost all the fund managers that I had come across or aware of and listened to what they, they talk about use the... Um, they don't use exponential moving averages. They use simple moving averages and something like that, but they don't use exponential. So I'm using exponential. So the price might be a little different. But what I would say is, on a, buying a call on a NEO at this particular stage, because you're using an option, I'd say that's one of the better ways to do it right now if you are more convinced that you've made it. You see this pattern right here? You see this cup where it fails? Um, in fact, if you want to do one of Larry's butterflies, look, you've got this, you've got that, you've got that, and now you've got this, and you've got that, and you've got a doji candle, silent doji yesterday, just a fraction above the low of, of, of uh, like two weeks ago. Um, so this is the pattern that you'd be looking at, and I'd say <clears throat> it's, it's a little risky but I don't know where you're, what, what, when it's, uh, is it April? It must be April. So if it's April, that's fine. I, I'd make it real short term. Why? Because not everything is in sync at this particular point because you've got your left side, you've got this rectangle formation, and it's kind of stuck in the rectangle formation for now. So you want to see the high of the day, which is at 970. Now, you might have really taken profits because if you got in yesterday, um, <clears throat> It, that's that's a very nice gap to the upside, and the premium would have expanded greatly. Now it's starting to shrink, I suspect. But what you are looking at is you want to get into this ugly candle right here, the candle of the 23rd of February. This is Neo Chinese company, electric cars, vehicles, trading at 945, up 25 right now. On the 23rd of March, uh, February, it had a high of 1040. You and today's high, so for 970. So that uh, yeah, so this candle, this ugly candle that gapped down and then got filled, you want to see about halfway into this thing at about 10.07. If you can get 10.07 by Monday, I say your April outlook is going to be much, much better. I don't want to see, oh, well, you shouldn't want to see 9.20 to $9, $9 tested now because that just stalls it. You want to see a breakout you want to see this turn in from an H pattern failure to a cup. So that brings me to the UNG question came in. Could you do UN? What's your stance on the UNG? Well, UNG, we don't have any position at all. We've had this uh, well, a long time ago, just a tiny little loss. And then I said, oh, okay, we're done with this. Um, you see this continuous pattern that just keeps going down and down. So this is the, if it was much higher, I'd say, wow, this is the pattern that I like to look at because I wish they had a rectangle that I could pull down instead of having to draw it in. Because this, look, see this pattern right here? And you see this pattern right here? You see how it's coming to, to a kind of a, a wedge conclusion right there? Well, I shouldn't say conclusion, we don't even know. But I don't like the stochastic at 6.75%. 
I want to see it rally sharply higher, very quickly, and go into the teens and then 20. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more when we get back about UNG. I'll be back in a moment. Guys are chatting, guys are busy. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So question came in by Toga. Could you comment on this, please? Oil inventory at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time report was a huge miss. Minus 7.5 versus 1.8 forecast, but oil is edging down. Actually, right now, I don't know whether I'm, I'm a little delayed. I've got it up 60 cents. So remember that there are so many other factors. I don't know how many times we've seen the 1030 oil number come out and market does something almost completely different to what you'd be thinking. So I, I cannot comment at all other than to say the nine has not crossed above the 14 in the crude oil contract. The stochastic is running nicely. The MACD is running nicely. <coughs> My suggestion is that within the 73s to the 74s, you'll start to see a pullback. If that pullback is deeper uh, than just a, a minor little $1 blip, but in fact goes to under 71.82, that's a lot more serious. But a lot of homework has been done for the uh, investors in, in the oil contract, either way, buyers, sellers, whatever it is, to say that they are trying to get back into this trading range between 71 and I'd, I'd put it at 76, just at this particular point. I don't know if that's going to succeed. 
So within this context, what I want you to say is I'm going to go quickly to this because running out of time. I'll hand you over to Steve Rhodes in a moment. Uh, let me just do this ESM23. Uh, I have no position, so I'm talking about this uh, just uh, very objectively. Um, I, although I did manage yesterday to get that low at the, by, was 3,085 and had a nice run. Now what we're looking at is we're at 4,034. You hit 4,047. But I said to subscribers, we want to be buying certain, certain positions to add on to what we have before 11.30 today. It's going to be really important. And then after that, those positions are not on. So I'm being very selective. And when I'm looking at this natural gas, it's going to be very important looking at this on, on an intraday basis that if natural gas continues to 16, goes to 2.30,